Hi guys, how are you? In this video, we're gonna elaborate on two concepts that we've already mentioned, which are the training error and the test error. These are not concepts that are particularly difficult, but uh, it's very important that we understand them very well. Okay, wh what is the training error? Training error is the average error we have when we use a model to predict on the same data set that we used to train that model. That data set is, is called the training set. And when we use that model to predict on that set, the error we get is, on, is uh, the, the error on average that, that we get is the training error. The test error is, is a very, uh, very different thing. Is the average error that we have when we use a model on new data, on data that the model has never seen. Okay. And this is the, the, the error that we want to minimize because in machine learning, we build models to make predictions on new data, on data that, that we have never seen before, that the model has never seen before and, and we have not used in, in, in training. So this is, this is the error we want to minimize. So in, in machine learning, basically, when we have a, a data set and we use it to train a model, then it's fairly easy to compute the training error. We just have to apply that fitted model on the same set that we used to train it. On the other hand, to compute an estimation of the test error is, is not easy. For that, we, we really need new data. And something that is really important to realize is that training error is not a good estimate of test error. This is really important. Why is that? Well, if you think about it, we've seen that if we have a model and we make it more and more flexible by adding degrees of freedom, we can make the model adapt better and better to the training set. Okay, so in that way, we are able to lower the training error pretty much as much as we like by making our model more and more complex. On the other hand, we've also seen that that's not the case with the test error. There is a point at which if we keep on adding flexibility to a model, if we keep on adding uh, degrees of freedom, there will be a point where our model is capturing too much noise of the training set. It's capturing too much of this random component that comes from sampling. It's memorizing too much of that particular training set. And when we, when we want to use that model to estimate, to make a prediction on new data, that random component is going to change because it is random and, and then our model may not behave as, as well. To put this in the overall context of, of machine learning, we're, we're going to review, revisit this figure that we looked at at the beginning of the course. And basically, what we do here is we've got a, a training data set. We use it to, to train a model. And here we would have a model already fitted with a particular value for our parameters. And we use this trained model to make predictions on new data. So the training error is the error that results from using this trained model on the training data set, on this data set that we used to train the model. And the test error is the model that we obtain when we use this trained model on new data, on data that the model has never seen before. This is a really important graph. Um, here we're representing on the horizontal axis, we're representing the model flexibility from low to high. At this end, we would have simple models, models that are not very flexible. And at this other end, we would have models that are very flexible with many degrees of freedom that are able to adapt to capture many complex patterns. And on the vertical axis, we've got the prediction error. And we're going to represent both the training error, which is this blue line, and the test error, which is this red line. And at this end of the graph, we would have these simple models. And here, these simple models are, 
are too too simple they don't have enough degrees of freedom so they're not able to capture the underlying relationship relationship between the inputs and the outputs and that's why we have a high training error but as we increase the number of degrees of freedom as we increase the flexibility of the model we can make this training error as low as we like basically but what we've seen is that the test error behaves in a very different way when we have a, a very simple model okay when we start adding uh, degrees of freedom we make the model more flexible at first we are adapting better both to the training set and also we're making better predictions because we're we're allowing the model to to fit the underlying relationship between the input and the output but there's a point about here where by adding more and more degrees of freedom what we're doing is making the model fit too closely to the training set okay here we are starting to capture part of this random component um, that will vary in different samples and therefore we don't want to capture that random component with, which will not be useful rather the opposite at the time of making predictions on, on new data and here at this other end we're overfitting the data we're we're having a very low training error we're adapting really well to the training set but too well we're capturing part of that random component so when we when we use this model to make predictions on new data what we get is bad predictions because we're capturing too much of that random component i hope it's clear and i'll see you in the next video which is one of the most beautiful videos or concepts that we're gonna learn you'll see see you soon